Well, hi for now, folks, and welcome to a very special Gradicast. If you've been following your social media recently, um, I'll rephrase that, if you've been living in the 21st century recently, then you'll know that father of two Mike Shepherd is due to start a marathon in aid of the charity Invest in ME. Now we've said before that ME is a horrendous disease that gives persistent and unshakable pain and fatigue to its victims, so it's definitely a worthwhile cause. But what makes Mike's marathon even more special is the fact that the kind of wildlife he can expect to see on his way will include things like polar bears. And not only that, about two and a half years ago, he had to have a pacemaker fitted to his heart. So I'm delighted to introduce you to Mike, who joins us now from his hotel in, uh, where was it? Uh, Spitsbergen in Norway, it's an island about two and a half hours north of uh, Norway's mainland. So welcome, Mike, and thank you very much for joining us. And um, I guess our first question for you has got to be, since you are going to be running across the North Pole with a pacemaker fitted to your heart, what evidence do you have to prove that you're not crazy? Uh, none whatsoever. Um, in fact, the uh, 18 months I've been planning and training for this, the, uh, the general comment from people I've spoken to, bar two people, um, uh, has been, are you nuts? Uh, so the general consensus of opinion is that, yes, I am crazy, um, but uh, uh, let us stop me doing anything in the past. Well, what, what's inspired you to run across the North Pole then? Um, very simply, as you said, I uh, had a pacemaker fitted uh, two and a half years ago. Uh, I was um, in a position that my heart rate was so slow that uh, every now and then it just got bored and stopped. Um, and the, uh, the technician in the hospital seeing me flatline for 4.2 seconds uh, got a bit agitated and suggested a heart a pacemaker would be the best thing for me. Um, but on my uh, recovery bed, uh, I was watching television, as you do, and there was a program about the North Pole and a section on it um, about the North Pole Marathon. I just thought, I'm not the sort of person to do woe is me. Uh, let's get up the backside and go and prove there's life after a pacemaker. So. Uh, Yep, that was it. That was the seed sown and momentum gathered since then. And what inspired you to choose Invest in ME as the charity you're going to be running for? That was very, very easy. Um, minutes after I'd uh, made the decision, uh, my daughter came into the room and I thought, that's it. That's the charity. Uh, she's had uh, ME, um, chronic fatigue, since she was 12. She's 18 now. Uh, missed most of her secondary education. Um, and I've seen firsthand how debilitating this disease can be for the person and the family involved. I guess then this gives us a, a quite rare opportunity really to get inside the mind of someone who lives with uh, someone who suffers from ME. Um, you also mentioned to me in our um, emails that your wife has fibromyalgia um, and obviously you have your um, heart uh, and your pacemaker too, so I kind of feel for your son who seems to have escaped all of these uh, health issues, but um, can you describe for us what might be a, a typical day in your household? Well, I wouldn't feel too hard for my son, Ben. He's um, a typical 17-year-old, spends most of his time in his bedroom playing computer games. Um, he does help a bit, but it's a bit unfair, but um, uh, a typical day is going to be just um, pretty much non-stop. Uh, when I get up in the morning, uh, I consider my job to be to get the household ready for um, uh, just running while I'm not there. So um, that would involve making sure that the um, laundry is put on, um, dishwasher's running, the kitchen's clean. Uh, so it takes me longer to get to work, in other words, I have to get out the door. Thankfully, I don't live very far from um, work. It's about a 15-minute journey each way. So uh, on occasions, I'll get phone calls saying, you need to come home and help with this, that, or the other. Um, or um, my wife particularly ill or my daughter's done something and I need to be there. So I do get called home more than uh, your average father would. Uh, but I go home, sort things out, either they work from home or go back to the office. Uh, and then after doing a, a full day's work, uh, I'll go home and carry on uh, with all the chores, the housework, uh, all, all, all the things that you would normally associate with sharing around the, the family, um, I get uh, the pleasure of doing when I get home from work. So it has as much of an impact on your life as it does on theirs. 
Um, and yet this doesn't seem to have stopped you from becoming the uh, MD of... Is, is it a company that you founded as well? Um, no, I was 18 months after founding it. Um, but um, uh, I'm the one that's grown it. Um, uh, the founding director uh, moved across to France and when he left, uh, it was just him like, um, he said, build it, run it as a one-man band, do whatever you want with it. And I've taken it from being um, effectively he and I. Um, we've now got... Um, Eight financial advisors, uh, three uh, staff in the UK, and uh, two in uh, France. So quite a bit bigger than when he left. And on top of that, you're also on call for the NHS. Is that right? Yes, yes. The um, uh, NHS community first responder. So if somebody dials nine 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 in our local area, uh, the theory is that um, because I'm local, uh, that I will get there faster than the ambulance. So it means I can administer. Uh, first aid, oxygen, including oxygen and defibrillator and life-saving stuff to keep them going until the ambulance turns up. Well, you clearly seem to be the the perfect man to do this this marathon, given that, um, from the sounds of it, you don't really like stopping. Uh, I'm not very good at resting and stopping. Um, uh, I'm quite often exhausted, um, but uh, uh, my, my wife now gets to the point when I sit down beside her for a... Uh, a drink or something that she'll get her stopwatch out and see how long I'm going to sit down for and uh, laugh when 35 seconds I said, well, that's enough. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm not very good at stopping. You said to me as well that um, you started a running club with your wife, which uh, has raised some money for charity as well. Yep, yep. We uh, about nine, ten years ago. Um, we opened a start up a running club uh, because I just wanted to show people how beautiful the Chilterns are. Uh, it's a very low-key event. There's only about 200 runners each year. Um, uh, but yeah, we've raised over £8,000 for various charities, including Best in Emmy. Running for good causes is clearly something that's uh, close to your heart, and um, your life suggests that you are, like I said, the, the kind of man who's going to be able to overcome the sort of obstacles that you'll meet in the North Pole. Uh, are you prepared for those obstacles, though? What, what sort of obstacles are you expecting? Um, I'm as prepared as I think I could be given my background. Um, obviously, it, it, you can always say I could have trained more and that sort of thing. Um, as far as the obstacles are concerned, um, polar bears, yep. Um, but uh, all I have to do is run past the person behind me on that one. But there's also very uh, nice people with large guns, uh, just in case polar bears do something that is uh, The ice sheet cracking is a, uh, another possibility. Uh, that did happen one year just outside the uh, overnight combination. I woke up in the morning and found it uh, right at the ice outside the front door. There was a 20 foot gap of uh, freezing water. So, uh, good job that wasn't 20 feet further to the left and in the tent. I like a lot of very wrecked people. You could wake up and find that your course has completely disappeared. Hmm. Um, the, the route is definitely not flat, it's not prepared, um, it's not like a track. It is running through the, um, the, the polar ice. So, so it is going to be absolutely energy sapping. Uh, running in snow, as we know, is very um, tiring. Well, what, what sort of things are going to keep you going while you're running then? There are uh, good things, uh, in as much as we're running nine laps around the Russian science station that's there. Um, so uh, after each lap, you're encouraged to go into the... Uh, the tent, warm up if necessary, you get kept over the frostbite and um, uh, all sorts of medical things that they want to make sure you're going to survive. This is not kind of the London Marathon or any other sort of normal race uh, where you just keep pushing on. Uh, you can't keep pushing on because if you don't make it around the next you've got problems. I think the fact that um, I need to look at the picture, uh, this is not about me. Um, yeah, very lovely. Um, being able to say that we've been to the North Pole and enough uh, to run a marathon at the North Pole um, is a great story. Um, but at the end of the day, it's the bigger picture. I'm here in order to raise as much money as I can for all the best I need. Um, because we have got to change the uh, opinion of lots and lots of people that it's nothing more than uh, your lady get off the backside and go and do some work. Um, we've got to find a diagnosis, we've got to find a, a cure. And absolutely, the Emmy community are going to be delighted to, to receive your donation. What, what, what sort of money have you raised so far? So far, I've raised just over £5,000. The, uh, the real key thing is that um, this has cost me, um, well, cost, 
not me, uh, about 13,000 pounds. The entry fee alone is 10 grand, but I've covered most of that with uh, either corporate sponsorship or I pay for it out of my own pocket. So every single penny that goes to Just Giving uh, goes to the charity. None of it is going to pay for me to have um, a bit of a holiday. So, uh, not that it is much of a holiday, but uh, it, it is all going to Just Giving there for the charity. I'm sure our Gradicasters will start donating. Um, we've had a few questions from them already. Um, one of them, of course, uh, the question I'm sure you've had from others, uh, which is, are you planning to give a wave to Santa while you're there? Well, if he's there, I will, certainly. I will mention uh, um, any sufferers, but of course this is the time of year when he has his rest, and uh, I understand that there's a good chance he's in uh, Barbados at the moment, signing himself. So um, he's... Uh, it's, uh, Possible that he won't be there, but I'll keep my eye out. Um, and also, uh, if you get the opportunity, I, I understand you're, you're going to be focused on running, but uh, if you get the chance, would you mind dropping down and leaving a few snow angels for us? Oh, absolutely, yes. The, the organisers have that low exposed skin, um, particularly not touching the ice. So you may not know it's me, um, because uh, I'll be uh, covered head to toe, head to toe in uh, my kit and goggles and all sorts of things, but... Um, uh, I'll put a big arrow out saying this is me and uh, I'll take a video for you. Fantastic. We'll look forward to that. Well, because this is the Gradicast, we do like to uh, have a focus on counting our blessings and saying thank you to folks. So um, are there any shout outs of thanks you'd like to give before you head off to your adventure? Uh, without question. The, the, the most important person um, to have got me here is Dave Smith. Um, great friend. Uh, he proved the greatness of his friendship because uh, for one reason or another uh, I missed the plane uh, in order to get here um, and uh, uh, I phoned him up in uh, almost tears because uh, of all the effort he's going in order to get here uh, and um, said I've missed the plane the whole thing's off um, come and get me, take me home and uh, uh, he didn't do that straight away. What he did is he went onto his computer and he found an alternative method, flights um, of uh, how to get me to Oslo uh, to the connecting flight, uh, and then drove me non-stop uh, from Heathrow through to Schiphol in Amsterdam, uh, so that I could make that connecting flight. Uh, he was driving there and back in 24 hours. Um, that is just fabulous. So thank you very much, Dave. Um, other people, um, uh, Athlete Service in Henley, they've done all my uh, massage and my uh, training plans, so they're fantastic. Um, Runners Retreat in Marno, uh, helped me with the kit, uh, so that's really kind of them. Um, obviously, my family, uh, for putting up with someone that's as nuts as I am. They absolutely know there's no point in stopping me when I've set my mind to something. Uh, so, uh, all fair play to them. Uh, the corporate sponsors. Um, they don't want to be listed um, because uh, uh, they feel that it's just a good thing that they've done. So thank you to them. They all know who they are. Orchard House, um, my company, um, well, partly my company, um, for putting up with uh, having the MD just disappear. Um, this has taken out probably half of their week because of my training. Uh, so uh, they've been running the, uh, the show for me, um, uh, particularly Gina. Um, she's really been uh, a school uh, helper in the office. Um, and uh, uh, all the other people that I've doubtless forgotten to mention, uh, they're all in my thoughts and my heart, and thank you. Thank you. And will you provide us with some of the links to people who've been helping you train as well so that we can uh, point some people in their direction? Absolutely. Yes, I will know you uh, Just in case there are any crazy people who want to try and follow in your footsteps. Uh, literally, because I guess you're going to be leaving some pretty deep footprints out there. Well, um, sadly, um, whereas in the UK when you run on snow, you compact it, um, so it's much easier. Um, uh, that only happens because it's, it's warm and wet, uh, comparatively. Uh, uh, at, at the North Pole, uh, because it's all dusty, uh, the more you run through the, uh, the snow, the deeper it gets because you cut it up. Um, so my idea of being last out the gate so that everyone else could compact it for me and I'd have an easy time uh, is actually the most obvious thing. You need to be at the front um, so that uh, uh, it's not torn up so much. 
Uh, well, we'll be spurring you on then. Uh, and on that note, actually, we usually finish our Gratticast with a gratitude, a piece of music that keeps us motivated to go on. And um, what sort of tune do you think you'll have in your head to help you push ahead to take the lead and go that final mile? Well, it's um, I found that to be a, uh, a great inspirational song. Um, uh, but the whole concept of um, struggling against adversity, uh, I think, is uh, uh, what I mean, a lot of us who are familiar with uh, and of my Fantastic. Well, I don't think you need to be sorry for that at all because it is a fantastic piece of music and no one's chosen it for us yet. So um, we'll be delighted to play that for you as you head off. Yep. Uh, the flight from Spitsbergen uh, leaves at 8, so we need to be up at 5.45, 5.30. Uh, in order to get the check in and all that sort of thing, some very early stuff. Um, uh, fly to the pole, uh, we've got four hours to get ourselves ready and um, a little bit of acclimatisation for temperature. Uh, and then, yeah, 2.30, the, uh, 230 our time, an hour ahead of you guys, um, is the start time for the race. Well, I'm hoping, um, all being well, to do it in about six hours, but uh, most people do it in five to eight hours. The longest has been 18. Uh, so hopefully I won't be uh, empty. Uh, uh, dire. Well, we, we'll certainly all be rooting for you. It's going to be half past one hour time when that race starts then. And uh, you'll, you'll be in all of our thoughts, Mike. So thank you ever so much for joining us. Will you uh, speak with us again when you're back to the UK afterwards? Oh, absolutely. Yes. yes I'll, I'll look forward to that. I can tell you uh, how it all went, what the reality was. We're looking forward to it too. So there you have him, folks, the miracle marathon master, Mike Shepard, hopefully proving that there is life after a pacemaker and that you can use it to bring even more positivity into the world. As Mike said, every single penny donated to his Just Giving page will go straight to Invest in ME. So please do follow the links in our description box below and all around our social media. Don't forget also to subscribe to the Gratticast if you haven't done that already, partly because that sends a cut of YouTube's ad revenue, also to Invest in ME, but also so that you are among the first to hear when Mike delivers his post-race interview right here on the Gratticast. Oh, and please also share this video around so that even more people get to meet this inspirational human being. So finally, thank you for watching. Stay thankful and ciao for now. The eye of the